Hello friends, today we are going to install a reverse camera on this Peugeot 2007. Welcome to this new video. Now before we start I have to say that Auto ABC sent me this camera in order to test and show it to you and another thing I like to say is that this method applies to every reverse camera and any car maybe the wiring is a little bit different maybe the screen is a little bit different but the main steps are all the same so maybe you remember that in the last video I installed this 7 inch touchscreen to have CarPlay on this car from 2008 and now we're going to add this reverse camera as well so mainly, therefore, you have to, to do three steps. First, you have to find your reverse light cable. That power source will trigger your camera and will show the camera image on your display. Second, you have to wire everything up and test it if everything works. And if that's okay, the third step is the installation itself. On this Peugeot 207, the cables are right over here. And you can see the connector here as well. I made a separate video that I will share right here on which cable serves what, what light and where you have to plug your power and ground wires to, specifically for this car. You can see it already prepared this. I use scotch lock connectors, which are really easy to clip on the cable. Then I also used these kind of connectors. They are sold on Aliexpress. I will share all the links of the products I use in the video description. Normally they have a red and black wire, but I stripped a wire so that I, I have a specific connector for the 12 volt and I have a specific connector for the ground. This way I can easily connect my camera and disconnect my camera for the testings and here you can see I have the other connectors right now I just attach them like this once the test succeeded I can undo the connectors this way it is easier to get them through all the grommets and so on so here you see my reverse camera itself with a little product overview now here's the camera with one cable that splits up in this power cable that you can see right over here with red and black wire so 12 volt and ground and I attached my connectors to them so this way I can give power and ground to my camera then the other cable is a tulip cable which is for the video and you can see that there's also a lit little red cable coming off from this tulip cable which isn't shown on the diagram so the diagram isn't correct what you have to do is this little red cable is a power cable which triggers your image so you have also you also have to connect this little red cable to your reverse light then all the way on the other side you can see I have my tulip cable with again a red power cable and then I have this female tulip cable with a mini jack that goes in my display with also a power cable so those two goes together this way I trigger my video which comes over here and triggers the display so the schema isn't correct I will share an image of the correct Shima 
on how to wire this specific type of camera. Now the only thing I have to do is connect my wires that are already prepared. So here is the power cable and here is the ground cable. There you go. And now we bring back this mini jack all the way up to the front. We can make contact and put the car in reverse to see if I have the correct display or not. So I retrieve the mini jack cable over here and now let's put it into the correct port. So now it is correctly plugged in. We can make contact and wait for the screen to start up. And now when we put the car in reverse, I have my reverse image. So of course the angle isn't correct right now because I only place the camera in the trunk, but you can see that the image is quite okay. So now I know that it works, all the wiring is correct. I can choose the place to install the camera now for the installation of the camera itself, I can undo both connectors and search for a good place. Of course, it means that you have to drill a hole in your car. If you're afraid to do so, or you just don't want to damage your car, you can also opt for an installation right over here, like this. Of course, the image will be a little bit obstructed by the trunk lid but it's a way to do it as well so i have to choose a place right over here ideally it will be in the middle but you can see that i have the lever so that won't be possible i can't insult here neither because i have my license plate light so i have to choose a place right over here or right over here so with the license plate, it will be less obstructed on this side. So I will have to drill my hole right over here. As the connectors are quite large, I use this kind of drill. But afterwards, of course, I will use silicon to cover the holes so no water can enter. Now before we start, we have to remove this plastic lid on the Peugeot, there is no screws, so it would be only a matter of pulling. Now you can see it's off and you can better see all the clips and I had luck because no clip breaked. Only this piece came off but you can see I clipped it back on as well. So now you can better see the inside of the trunk lid as well and we can better see where we can attach the camera to. The idea was to install the camera over here but you can see this is plastic and it is attached to this metal trunk part so if i drill a hole right over here i still will have to be able to pass over there as well and i can see here my license plate light and all the rest is blocked so i i could drill my hole right over here next to the license plate and guide my gable in over there and I should be able to bring it inside then once inside I can follow this cable over here go to the grommet and then get inside to the car and all 
the way down over there. So you understand that I need some extra cable for that. And I'll use this audio cable. It's a little bit thick, but it should do the job. You could also use much thinner power wire. Uh, 0.75 mil would be enough. So you can see as well that this camera doesn't come with a fuse. I think it would be better to put a fuse between the camera and the original car power cables, but I can add the fuse afterwards as well. So this way, if something should happen with the cable, it won't affect the, the, the car fuses or the car cables. I can see here that the camera uses max 0.5 watt. So with 12 volts, that means that it only should use a 0.04 amp fuse. So a really small fuse of 5 amps would be more than enough. So finally, I've decided to remove this complete cover to be able to work correctly on the right space because with the structure of the trunk you're quite limited so i had to drill in a wrong direction and so on so it will be much easier like this in order to remove this kind of part it's you just need a tool like this to remove the four bolts you undo the license plate light and the trunk lever connector and that's quite it so now the hole is drilled i will remove the hard parts with a file now with this hole in place i also made a little hole in this plastic part so the cable can pass right behind here and then go to the metal part so now we'll fix the camera itself in place and we can put back all the parts. I have pre-drilled my holes. I'll use the sticker as well so the camera would be solidly attached. Now the camera is placed. I can put back this part on top. Therefore, bring in the tulip cables. And there we go. Okay, of course, I will have to set the camera in the correct angle and when that's done I will put some silicon over here so no water can enter. Now the camera is in place I put a little bit of duct tape over the hole and I also added this cable protector this way the hole is also less big and then I put some all-round silicon on top of it so it's a little bit messy in the inside but it doesn't matter better have too much than too little now we let this dry and in the meanwhile i can test the camera so again i just wired it up like this for now of course don't forget to put back the door lock connector now I can close the trunk to test my image and to fix the camera in the right position. So that's what it looks like right now. I fixed the screws so the camera won't move by itself. And now I will go inside of the car and set the image correctly. So the image is really good, but I would prefer to see a little bit of the bumper. So let's correct it right now. So I put my toolbox just behind the car with 20 centimeters, so where a normal car could be parked. And you can see I can still see it. 
and the red lines are just on top and I can also see further away so I think this position would be just perfect now you see the guidelines as well so of course as the camera is faced downwards if you would like to use those lines well you should face the camera a little bit more up but I really love to see just behind the car if there's something yes or not now you can also go to the menu and set guidelines but there's something strange you can see reverse guide and now when I switch to the reverse mode you can see I have a double line so that's really odd so I'll keep that off I can also use a reverse mirror so mirror the image and you can mute the reverse so that's something I will test later on when driving so now we know that everything works I can guide the cable completely in now this is the hardest part of the whole operation nicely hide the cable to the grommet so I use this little help I will attach the cable and pull it inside this part goes in and go to the front and the power cable goes down now the power cord is installed to the connectors again and to my reverse light I closed up the seal, the grommet and I correctly soldered my power cord over here to the camera now again I ran the cable to the screen in order to do a final test before closing everything up so everything works and there you go it is all nicely wrapped up with fire retarding tape as well with its tie wraps and it all joins up here together so now i can put the lid back on and this is what it looks like on the outside so you can see that the hole is completely filled with silicon and my hose so the cable is hide it you don't see it you only see it over here so that's really nice now the trunk lid is back in place as well and now we can simply guide this cable all the way up to the front so that is quite easily especially if you use one of those plastic tools just hide it behind the ceiling liner I guided the cable all the way around up to here in front and there it's going down you can see a little bit and I treat it behind I remove the fuse panel in order to retrieve the cable over here and then it goes here to the side and then go up to the screen See that the image is really nice. So that's how you install a reverse camera 
aftermarket yourself. So let me know in the comments what you think about this video. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the very next video. Bye bye.